Shri Sabha the quick prayer. Namami Dhanvantara Madhi Devam, Suras Rehi Vandita Pada Padvam, Loki Jararu Payamrityanasham, Data Ramesham, Vivida Shadina. So today we are, um, we're going to do Ayurvedic spices and herbs. So when we uh, study Ahara and Ayurveda, we give a lot of importance to uh, adding spices to uh, ensure that you change the uh, doshic uh, actions that certain herbs have. Now, Ayurvedic spices, um, we, we use it both in your cooking. Um, so for instance, if you're making something that has a lot of uh, vata, right? Like if you're using dal and if you're using, say, uh, the yellow chickpea dal or you're using uh, like a fava dal or something that increases your vata, increases your uh, in the, the basic um, element of air and gas in your body, you add things that will help cut that down. Like you add things like um, ajamoda, you add things like jeera, you add, you know, you add stuff like hingu, like asafoetida or cumin or whatever to bring that vata under control, to balance that vata out, right? So that in that sense, we use these spices in our day-to-day -day cooking. Uh, based on your prakriti, there are certain spices that would help you all the more. So um, based on your client's pra prakriti, you can even su suggest, uh, you know, her, your, the patya accordingly. You can suggest what kind of spices they can use, how they can not just use it as a spice, but in what forms you can use it. That's one way of it. And the second thing is, these spices that we're going to learn about, they're actually used in Ayurvedic classical preparations. Like in some of the, um, the arishtams or some of the churnams, you know, some of the powders that are made, some of the lehyas that are made. There are these Ayurvedic, uh, these spices that are used and they are then, you know, uh, used very specifically for certain disorders, right? So let's start with Ajamoda. Ajamoda is uh, also called, it's, it's just your celery seeds and the rasa is pungent rasa, the virya is ushna virya and the vipaka is pungent vipaka again. The gunas are, it is light, it is dry and it's penetrating. It's got that very sharp um, penetration. So it has deepener pachana properties so it can be used when a person has armor it can be used when a person's undergoing um you know indigestion because uh, the agni the basic digestifier is weak uh, it it helps people who have shwasa who have respiratory issues who have dyspnea who have uh, asthma and so on it can also be used to bring down your vata so um, when there is an increase in vata like like i was telling you if you have these uh, varieties of legumes that increase your vata if you have too much of it and then you have that bloated sensation or you have that um, you know you have that that urge to um, you to uh, pass out your vata or if you you feel that the vata is just going all over your body and it's kind of creating a lot of discomfort. This ajamoda can be used to help bring down the vata and to correct the uh, movement of that vata. That's a very important function that ajamoda has. So if you have too much of ajamoda, it will kind of increase the pitta. But uh, to a certain extent, it's fine. It doesn't really affect your pitta, but too much of it can increase your pitta. Apart from that, it is generally very good for vata and kapha related disorders. So if you have congestion or if you have dyspnea or if you have, um, you know, just uh, a lot of phlegm, uh, then this is great for you because this will help clear your congestion. It will kind of help clear that channel out. For dyspnea, for shwasa, you can give this along with pipali and with some honey. Actually, you can make a tea out of it and um, you can add a little bit of pipali and honey to it. You can also make it in the form of a kashaya. So the, the difference between making a tea with an Ayurvedic herb, <coughs> I'm sorry, and making a kashaya with an Ayurvedic herb is very simple. For a kashaya, you kind of allow the, uh, the uh, total quantity of water to reduce a lot more. So if I'm adding one teaspoon of water, and if I'm adding, um, you know, if I'm adding, say, 
uh, a little more of um, uh, water. Say I'm adding like about four times water, or I'm adding say six cups of water. I have to reduce that to about one cup. So I have to keep reducing it so that the essence of this spice is really strong, right? And because of that, the uh, it, it's just a it's just like a stronger version of tea. But when you're making the tea out of it, it's generally a little more diluted, right? So that that is the basic difference between making a, a, a herbal tea and making a, 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 you know making a kashayam out of it, right? So you can boil this ajumoda along with ginger, pickle, fennel, and all that for digestive disorders and for respiratory support and so on. You can also use it in your cooking, like when you're sautéing vegetables, you can season your oil or your ghee with this and then you can use that in your cooking as well. Uh, is the disturbance in sound coming from my end or does somebody, does somebody else have their audio turned on? Monica ji, can you please help me with that? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So this is Ajamoda. The next thing is Ajwain. Sorry, I think I'm in, yeah. The next thing is Ajwain. So Ajwain is, um, th there's just a very mild difference between Ajamoda and Ajwain. They more or less, you know, have uh, similar properties and they kind of do the same function. But the only difference is this Ajwain is something that's more locally um, found in India. It's like wild celery seeds. That is what is Ajwain. And Ajamoda is just celery seed. So Ajwain would be your Karim Copticum. That is the variety that Ajwain is. But apart from that, the functions, the, you know, the, the basic actions that both the herbs have, uh, both the spices have are uh, more or less the same. And you can use it the same way too. You can make kashayams, you can make teas and you can use it the same way too. Uh, certain added things that you can do with Ajwain would be you know, using it with shatavari and with turmeric for menstrual pain, uh, uh, using a little bit of same thing like like you did with ajmoda. You know, you can add honey and pipili, and you can use it for congestion and for um, kapha and all that. You can also use it with sorry. You can also use it along with uh, Gokshara and Punarnava for Mutravaha uh, Shrotas. Both Gokshara and Punarnava act as diuretics. And um, because Ajwain has this Vata Lomana property and because it, ha it, it can be used in case of pain, especially, you know, when you have a colic pain, you can use Ajwain. So you can give it along with something that acts as a diuretic in case of, you know, a urinary uh, bladder problem. And uh, if there is water retention or if, you know, there's something where you need to use, um, where you want to give a Gokshara or Punarnava, you can add a joint to it and you can give that uh, also. So the next thing is white cumin. White cumin is otherwise called Shweta Jiraga. Shweta means, uh, it just means white. It's, it's, a, um, it's a Sanskrit term. And the rasa and the vipaka of white cumin is pungent. Um, the guna is light and dry. It is heating in virya. The most important use of this cumin would be uh, vata nulomanam, the fact that it acts as a carminative and a digestive. It can be given um, when, you, when you have armor, or when you have uh, less agni, when there is... Um, you know, when there is uh, a lot of um, gas formation that is there, it is it works extremely well for vata and kapha disorders. So generally, when you when a person has um, menstrual cramps or when they you know when they uh, they have this PMS related bloating, or when they have a problem with the menses. Uh, you know, some people have uh, a lot of difficulty just before the bleeding, the flow of bleeding uh, starts, you know, that initial, that one day they have a lot of cramp and a lot of pain. At that point, this uh, jiraka can be used, cumin can be used. It, it also helps lactating mothers who are nursing the, uh, the baby. It also helps, 
in that and normally what um, is done is after a, 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 mother, a woman uh, delivers in the olden days and even even otherwise in ayurvedic practice um, you don't give the mother who has just had a baby you don't give her anything cold to drink because there's a lot of vata that is uh, built up and there's a lot of vata disturbance that has happened inside her body because the whole process of childbirth uh, you know requires the uh, entire functioning of apana vata so you have to give her something that is warm that is hot and that does vata you know anulomana and that kind of helps to suppress the vata because there's a lot of vata there's a vata vesation that's just happened and it's a physiological thing it's not a pathological condition but to ensure that this vata is brought under control um jiraka water you know water and it's just you, you boil jiraka in water and then that is given along with a dhanvantara kashaya so i'll put that down there for you this um when you give a dhanvantra form of you know the, the dhanvantra pills or you know any form of dhanvantra that is given you get it in the form of vati or pills which is the most common um, way you get it that is extremely good for uh, vata related disorders right for people who have constipation for people who have gastritis and so on when you give that medicine you can always give this jiraka water as an anupana so it's very easy to make you just boil cumin along with your water and um, you take you strain that and then you know you can mix the pill with that and give and you have it a little warm and that is an extremely effective uh, way of bringing down your vata vesication when vata aggravated a lot that's a great thing to do and other thing that you can do with uh, Uh, with jiraka is um for people who have uh, fevers for people who have um, you know especially fever where they have this um, irregular kind of pattern you know they suddenly have fever uh, very high temperatures and then the temperature comes down to about 99 point something or 100 and then it goes back up and then it comes down so uh, that's a condition that's called vishama jwara in um, ayurveda when someone has that you can give them this jiraka powder along with jaggery it works great uh, for such fevers for people who have um, vomiting actually jiraka is given along with some jaggery with some uh, pepper and with a specific kind of salt called savarchala lavana it's a combination you know all these are put together and then that is mixed with honey and given to people who have fever who have uh, vomiting and who are throwing up very badly um another thing is for people who have this uh, uh, who have amla pitta who have uh, uh, a lot of acidity and a lot of gas formation you can give uh, a ghee that's prepared with this jiraka and with dhanyaka another thing is jiraka is one of the most easily available um, ingredient in ayurvedic medicine so if you don't want to just give uh, you know uh, dietary regulations to your clients but you want to give them something that is uh, in in an ayurvedic medicine form you can give them uh, this jiraka in the form of you know jiraka um, there's an arishtam called jiraka the arishtam kadi so that's the most uh, that's one of the most effective arishtams for gastritis and for uh, bringing down your um, you know bringing down your vata then there's something called a jiraka the modaka which is like uh, along with jiraka there are other spices that are added to it and then it's made into a modaka form into a you know it's it's just rounded into a ball and then that that can be given to uh, your patients also it comes in the form of a ghee which is just called a jiraka uh kritam uh, people even make a thaila with it but then that thaila is not very easily available but there is a jiraka thaila also that is uh you know that is uh, available so uh for lactating mothers right what is done with this jiraka is um you actually boil water with jiraka and that water is given to mothers to uh, help increase breast milk and even to reduce the inflammation of the uterus right so this is this is actually one of my favorite um uh spices because 
the most important thing in ayurveda is you know most of the time you have these um, you have a vata kind some kind of a vata disturbance that happens when you have aches when you have pains when you know even for, for your normal regulation of your normal bowel movements and for uh, for women you know during her period so this vata aggravation is something that everybody goes through at some point in you know even even during the day or during a week all of us have a vata imbalance that happens because we don't really follow every aspect of dinacharya and ritucharya so even for people who have a pitta related acidity or you know um, people who have pitta related problems with their digestion or if they have manda agni there's still a role that vata plays so this jiraka is something that uh, every ayurvedic physician should have uh, with them because it's a very easy spice to use you can use it in your cooking you can use it in you can you know make medicines out of it you can also prepare medicines with all these spices and give so once you know how these spices work you guys can even you know kind of come up with uh, these spices so different ways of using jiraka boiling water with jiraka and then using it to help reduce your cramping and bloating milk can be given boiled with jiraka for lactation you can use cream. in your food, in your vegetables and you know your cooking and your whatever you've made uh you can mix it with homemade buttermilk that's again a very 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 effective way of having jiraka if you mix it with buttermilk and have it it can be prepared into a rice where you can season the rice with jeera and uh, this is again a very common preparation in india you know when it's one of the easiest kinds of rice to make also because it doesn't really take much time and the rice has this really nice aroma and a beautiful flavor that this jeera gives the rice so other preparations that have jeera ka one is hingwa ashtaka churna which is given for people who have indigestion people who have acidity bloating sensation gas uh, prob gastritis even when they have um, you know a bouts of diarrhea and constipation um and when there's ibs sim- symptoms just basic symptoms of ibs this hingwa ashtaka churna can be given to such people you can either have it along with your um with your rice which is one of the most common ways of having it where you know you mix the you mix one teaspoon of the churna with the first bowl is of your rice and you have it and um, that's supposed to be the most effective way of having it apart from that if you're not able to do that uh, you can mix it with buttermilk or you can mix it with water and you can have the hingwa ashtaka churna uh, some people even like prescribing hingwa ashtaka churna with a little bit of ghee when there is a pitta uh, related issue so that that ghee will kind of help to go in there and pacify the pitta so jiraka arishta we saw that and then there's yoga raja guglu which is used in various joint disorders and when there's aches and pains and osteoporosis osteoarthritis and you know basic arthritic conditions when there is a joint inflammation or pain yoga raja guglu is given to such people and one of the ingredients of yoga raja guglu is jiraka right so that is that is white jeerak now you have a black variety of it which is called krishna jeeraka so that is pungent again ushna pungent it kind of does this very similar actions it reduces vata and um kapha it can be used for increasing your agni for you know helping when there's diarrhea to kind of help and absorb that excess water and uh these are the various things of black jeeraka so what generally is, uh, is done is um you know in certain uh, in in certain uh, formulations of your jeeraka arishta and in certain formulations of your uh, uh, of uh, jeeraka uh, uh, formulations right the kalpas that have jeeraka they kind of add uh, either they add both the varieties of jeeraka or in some places depending on what is easily available uh they add that so the most common thing that you will see in most of the preparations is the white variety of jeera that's added because that is something that's uh more easily available and that's what is added but uh if you look at the place that you buy your herbs from uh, you'll even fi- you you can uh, make out whether they've in in some uh places they kind of they you just look at the back of your thing and you can find that they would have added both the varieties of uh, jeeraka 
right? So this basically does very similar functions to uh, white jiraka. And the next thing is coriander. So coriandrum sativum, coriander. Coriander is uh, of bitter and pungent rasa. Um, it has the leaves of coriander. The coriander leaves are actually cooling virya and uh, the seed is ushna virya. So the the thing that you see in the picture here is uh, is ushna virya and that is the spice that is normally added to um, uh, no actually the, the uh, caraway seeds is more uh, of, of a variety of fennel that you get it, it isn't your black cumin but it's it's um, uh, it's a Persian variety of cumin and it's it's a variety of fennel uh, I think it's the meridian fennel that you get that is what your uh, caraway seeds are uh, the guna is light and unctuous for your coriander, uh, the seed. So uh, the coriander powder that is used in a lot of Indian uh, cooking and uh, the Korean and coriander powder, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, mixed along with other powders and used as garam masala. And it, it's basically like a masala that's used in a lot of Indian cooking that is uh, powdered using the dry seeds that are you know then um, sorted heated roasted and then powdered so the karma of uh, coriander is deepener pachana armor in case of armor uh, pachana and all that this coriander can be used it helps in colic pain it helps uh, to help pacify burning sensation thirst uh, can be used if your agni is very low it can it is a trishnagna it kind of helps to pacify thirst uh, it's very satisfying to the heart it can be given to people who have krimi if there's any kind of worm infestation then this uh, coriander helps uh, it has a diuretic property and it also helps to pacify uh, skin disorders so this basically does tridosha hara it kind of pacifies all the three doshas and um, it's uh, it's it's generally a very healthy um, spice to use in your cooking. It adds great flavor to your food, as well as uh, you know it's it, it's a great spice because it it kind of helps pacify all the three doshas. Now uh, the most common preparations are there's a preparation called danya kahima, in which this coriander is um, soaked in cold water and it is left it's covered and left overnight and then the next day morning you kind of strain just the water and that is called danya kahima and that's a great uh, uh, medicine for thirst and for uh, burning sensation and so on it's given along with honey and a little bit of sugar right i'll write that that down for you danya kahima uh, apart from that, for people who have armor, people who have indigestion, what you can do is you can um, you can either heat a boil water with uh, coriander and with a little bit of ginger, and then strain that water, and you can give that to them, or you can just soak water. Uh, you mean sorry, soak coriander and uh, ginger in some water and cover it and you know kind of let it process the water and then strain that and use that so this is something that can be done for people who have armor who have indigestion right and uh, there's another combination that's done for people who suffer from gout um, this is a uh, you know where you take coriander the seeds coriander seeds along with jiraka and you take so the ratio should be one is to two so for one portion of um, your coriander you take two portions of jiraka and you add a little bit of jaggery to it and then that's mixed nicely so normally you, you powder the coriander and you powder the jira so you use the powders so if you take one teaspoon of coriander take two teaspoons of jira and add a little bit of jaggery to it and that is given for people who suffer from vata ratta. the next thing is clouds so this is bitter and pungent in rasa. The virya is very cooling. It is uh, light, oily, and it penetrates. Um, 
it helps to reduce uh, the three doshas, but mainly va- uh, kapha and pitta dosha, and the vipaka is katu vipaka. It's pungent vipaka. So this can be given as a, a deepana pachana herb. This is again a spice that can you can, that adds flavor to your food. So you can you know kind of uh, saute it along with your vegetables, or you can add. You don't even have I have to add too many of it. You can just add one or you know two uh, cloves. Uh, it helps for people who have respiratory problems, who have coughs, who have throat issues, who have um, um, that vomiting sensation, nausea. So um, this is something that if you don't want to you know powder it and you don't want to use it like that, you can just bite one. a uh, club and you can you can just bite it and eat it and that will kind of help um in case of uh, nausea you know or after you finished eating food if you feel extremely full you can just pop in one uh, one club and you can um, kind of munch on that and that will kind of help settle your stomach it's also used for pain support so um it it is added in mahanarayana oil and uh, it is used for pain um for helping when there's pain when people have a uh, pain in their uh, in their gums or when there's some kind of a teeth problem or if they have bleeding gums or if there is uh, you know when people who sub- suffer from halitosis so for such people you can uh, they actually uh, there's an oil that's made with clove there's a clove oil that is made and uh, you can use that you can just you know uh, apply that in your mouth or you can gargle with that there's also a butty of a tablet that is made with lavanga this is called lavanga in ayurveda so you can give them a lavanga the butty with uh, which will help for um, you know uh, your oral ear problems there's another preparation called himasagara ras that is prepared with uh, with this uh, so Actually, sorry himasagara thailam that's prepared it's an oil that's prepared with um, cloves and this himasagara thailam is very very effective for people who suffer from fro- uh, frozen shoulder and locked jaw uh, it's effective it's extremely effective so you apply it on frozen shoulder when you know especially even in very severe cases where they can't really lift their hands or if they have um, if you, you can kind of feel that uh, swelling and for such people this himasagara thailam can be applied even for locked jaw just you know mild application of that thailam with very mild pressure uh, outside your um, on your cheek uh, you know where the lock wherever the jaw is locked exactly at that spot and behind your ear and around that area gentle massage with not too much pressure but with just a little bit of pressure will help ease the locked jaw uh it is even added to a preparation called uh halen drops which is like a very strong uh drop that is made with camphor with clove and with many other things so just a few drops of that in water and then you inhale using that water that will kind of ease out your entire um, congestion and you know it will help you bring out your phlegm and so on uh for women who suffer from morning sickness during their pregnancy cloves help uh such cases also you know uh when you you know you can either just you don't have to eat the entire thing but just a little bit of it will help to um will help in case of morning sickness and it's just basically a great uh, mouth refresher so uh you know it it is it is used as a mouth wash and um if if you i don't know if you've ever eaten at an indian restaurant or if you've ever um you know eaten uh, an indian food place um after you're done with the food they always give you this uh, they give you ji- um, jeera a sweet form a version of jeera which is called somph they give you they give you the sweeter one you know with some kalkand or with some sugar candy and um along with that a very powdered form so if, I, i don't know if you've seen have you seen these mouth uh, fresheners the small packets that you get i've even seen it in the us in some of the indian restaurants there Uh, there's a small packet of mouth freshener it's like a mint that you know with but it it's got a lot of stuff that's added to it and uh, these clubs are actually powdered and that is also added to it it's a great mouth freshener you you can even make your own uh, mouth freshener with you know these these ingredients that i just told you they all work great 
and the uh, sugar candy will just kind of give that little bit of um, sweetness to it so it isn't difficult to consume it right so yeah the next thing is cinnamon cinnamon is another great spice it has great flavor um it has that um it has that little bit of sweetness that uh, that's that's present in uh, you know in the spice but at the same time it is pungent and bitter also in um, in the, the taste <clears throat> so it is light it is dry and it is penetrating that those are the karmas or um, so those are the gunas of uh, cinnamon it's ushnavirya it's hot in potency and it helps to remove pacify vata and kapha the vipaka is also pungent vipaka it helps if you have too much of uh, cinnamon it will slightly increase your pitta so in general the karma of uh, cinnamon would be it acts as an antitoxic it relieves throat pain headache uh, it acts as a diuretic it relieves uh, rhinitis and uh, anorexia it can be used in case of itching and um, there's an oil that is made using cinnamon it's called cinnamon oil the cinnamon oil can just two or three drops of the cinnamon oil can be applied on insect bites or in case of uh, any wound because of an insect bite or you know a sting or uh, any any kind of wound that you have on your uh, hand or your leg or anywhere uh, just a few drops of the cinnamon oil will help soothe your skin it is uh, it 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 is great for teeth strengthening so for people who have um, you know who have issues with their gums and who have issues with their tooth uh they can just chew a small piece of the cinnamon it, it helps it, it's great and um there are so many of these um, um you know these um health related articles that have been coming out with how great cinnamon and honey work and about what all you can do with it um it's you know like you can apply it on your face you can have it as a tea it helps you lose weight so there are like various uh, aspects of the cinnamon um the only thing that you have to be careful about with these um health related articles is ensure that you don't have too much cinnamon because if you have too much cinnamon it will increase your um pitta and it will in in turn it will kind of lead to acidity and you'll have that burning sensation and so on so for people who suffer from gastritis and people who suffer from acidity especially when they have a chest burn or a heart burn and you know when they have symptoms of gerd don't suggest any uh, cinnamon preparation for them they can use cinnamon in their food as a pinch of cinnamon with their diet and so on but don't recommend cinnamon teas or you know cinnamon powder or the you know and, and any of the, those things to them because that will kind of increase the acidity and now some of the classic preparations that use cinnamon one is um vayu gulika in vayu gulika there's a little bit of cinnamon that's added uh, the other one is sitopaladi churna which is a churna that is used for uh, you know for wet cough for congestion when there's a lot of phlegm Uh, sito pada pada di churnam and the sito pala di churnam has a little bit of cinnamon in it now that is one reason uh, when people have sito pala di churnam for their cough and when they have too much of it they start getting hungry because you know that it, it kind of starts increasing that pitta so you start getting that burning sensation and you start feeling a little hungry and you need something in right then so apart from that uh, it can even be it, it, the cinnamon works great for pimples and for acne application of cinnamon on the face works great for uh, acne and pimples but you need to apply very little bit of the cinnamon because it's it's that uh, heat that it generates if you apply too much of cinnamon and if you your you have sensitive skin it will tend to uh, burn your skin and uh, it'll make you you know it it'll um, you can kind of feel that heat that is generated so the next one is black cardamom so black cardamom is uh, pungent and bitter in rasa the guna is lagu and ruksha it's light and dry it has katu vipaka and ushnavirya so it helps improve taste 
um it basically in helps to pacify your vata and kapha and it increases pitta too much of black cardamom will increase pitta it can be used in case of cough in case of cold asthma um you know when there's excessive thirst headaches uh, itching sensation oral disorders vomiting pain throat pain sore throat respiratory conditions when you have asthma or cough and so on um so again uh, this black cardamom is um is is uh used in a preparation called kalyanaka gritam which is a preparation that is used for people who have uh, you know who have manasika uh problems it's a ghee that's made with a lot of herbs it's called kalyanaka gritam and there's also a maha kalyanaka gritam so that's a formulation that is given to people who have uh, manasika related disorder disorders you know in case of depression in case of anxiety in case of um, even very serious conditions like when they have schizophrenia or you know even even a little serious condition um along with uh, their you know whatever other medicine is given to them this kalyanaka gritam kind of helps to calm them down and it kind of helps to you know um, it kind of just helps to keep them grounded and to uh, help their memory help their uh, um, the way their mind uh, processes things their thoughts and so on it is also there uh, in an uh, in another asavam that's called uh, sarivadya asavam which can be given to people who have a lot of um, you know um, it, it just kind of it it has uh, herbs that are um, uh, shariba is a herb that's like uh, that that kind of helps to cool down the system so uh, this is given to people who have um, who have problems because of uh, you know because of uh, uh like for instance of uh, it's given to people who have diabetes who have um, skin related complications when they have a skin condition and then when there is a complication that happens then it's given to such people it's given for diabetic carbuncles that happen right when there's uh, when you have diabetes and when there's some kind of a side effect that happens then this works great it's even used in case of ru- uh, rheumatism sharivadya asavam works great so uh, that is black cardamom the next thing is sukshma ela or the green variety of uh, cardamom so this is sweet in uh, rasa and pungent it is cooling uh, it is light and dry it is sweet in vipaka so it has deepana pachana shula prashamna uh, it helps in case of cough in for helps uh, it helps to bring your vata uh, it to regulate the movement of vata for chardi for hikka for uh, hiccups in case of vomiting and so on so in general it pacifies all the tridoshas but if you have too much of cardamom too much of the sukshma variety of cardamom it increases pitta this is something that's actually used in uh, sweet in rice puddings in 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 your pies and, and you know in indian sweets that are made because of the aroma and the flavor that this particular uh, spice has so you can make a tea out of uh, the cardamom you can add it um, you know with fennel with cumin with ginger when you have an abdominal pain or you know to help uh, in case of indigestion or if your appetite isn't doing all that great uh, if you chew a piece or two of these cardamoms it kind of helps to relieve bad breath even for indigestion just chewing a piece of cardamom helps if you give it along with any uh, mootra herb any diuretic herb um, you can mix cardamom and you can give it um, they know with your kokshara with punarnava and so on the thing is when uh, normally even for your rice pudding and even for the paisam and the sweets that i made this cardamom is just added you know after everything is done you just kind of add the cardamom and it will give you that flavor and give you that a uh, taste normally it's you don't boil uh, anything after you add the cardamom to it now there's this uh, uh, there's this very very famous preparation called eladi thailam that uses this green uh, variety of cardamom there's also a gritam that is made so eladi thailam is used for allergic dermatitis for acne and so on 
and there is a ghee that's made with it called eladi ghee which is used for abdominal bleeding because it has that cooling property it will soothe the uh, mucosa and it kind of helps to soothe the uh, the abdomen so in case of abdominal bleeding this eladi kritam works great the next is uh, fenugreek fenugreek or methika which is also called uh, methi in um, it's easily available in all your indian stores it has heating birya it has pungent vipaka it has pungent rasa also uh, it's light and oily it is deepana pachana and uh, it helps in vata anulomanam it helps in virechana um it's kapha and vata uh, sorry vata and yeah, kapha no it helps to pacify vata and kapha and it can be given to people who have diabetes because it kind of helps to uh, keep the sugar under control also for people who have a lot of cholesterol related issues you can give them uh, this uh, you know the the seeds the fenugreek seeds and that kind of helps to reduce their um, cholesterol it can be given to lactating mothers to nursing mothers uh it helps to remove carcinogens from the body uh it is very useful after childbirth you know uh, to help uh, just promote your uh, the health of your uterus and uh, it's also great in for people who suffer from dysmenorrhea and people who suffer from uh cramps and menorrhagia and when there's excessive bleeding and so on um, you can make a tea with this fenugreek and that tea can be given to um, such people now the the seeds are hot in potency whereas the leaves the methi leaves fresh leaves that are available those leaves are actually cold in potency so just like how coriander the leaves are cold and the uh, seeds are hot similarly here the leaves are cold and the meth these methi leaves can be added to make uh, you know those indian tortillas that are made with wheat and with all that so those um, the seeds i mean sorry the leaves can be added to uh, your wheat flour and it can be made into um, tortillas and you know that's uh, very it's very healthy for the body so uh, normally when um, for people who you know who have difficulty in digesting food and for people who have difficulty because the agni is very low you can ask them to add fenugreek to their food to their uh, you know to whatever they're cooking like the vegetables and so on and that can be um, you know it can, it can be used along with the food that they make the only thing you have to be careful about is that uh, fenugreek has this real bitter taste uh, you know it has this it, it is a it, it is a pungent rasa but when you mix it with your food it has this um, it has this real strong taste so you need to make sure that you add just one or two seeds and not too many of them because then that can leave that you know that taste in your mouth and another thing that you have to be careful about is if you give too much of um, fenugreek it will lead to constipation so for people who actually have uh, who have a diarrhea and who have uh, you know who who um, have a lot of uh, excessive bowel movements you can give them fenugreek it will help but if you give too much of fenugreek to uh, to people they can end up with constipation so this is um, this fenugreek is used in uh, the preparation of dhanvantara arishtam which uh, which is given most commonly for postnatal care it is also used in musta arishtam musta arishtam is a is a is a narishtam that is given for people who suffer from indigestion and diarrhea and so on so in that also fenugreek is there um for people who have diabetes you can they can have about 5 grams of fenugreek powder once or twice a day it will help uh, bring their sugar levels under control yeah so you can have fenugreek tea you can use it with your food you can soak fenugreek and use it in the morning another great thing with fenugreek is if you add fen if you soak fenugreek overnight and the next day morning if you actually just grind that nicely in a blender right you uh, grind that nicely and make a nice paste out of it 
and if you apply that on your hair it will help soothe um, if you have irritable scalp or if you have dandruff or you know you're losing a lot of hair that fenugreek paste works really well for your hair it will make your hair a lot more softer and it's great for your hair so the next thing is chrysanthemum so chrysanthemum is bitter and uh, sweet in rasa it is uh, it has a cooling barrier and it has a uh, pungent vipaka it's dry and light it it helps to pacify pitta and it can be given you know in case of uh, colic pain in case of uh, fever uh, it acts as a rasayana it kind of acts as a rejuvenating agent uh, it it is used in cases of uh, headaches in cases of uh, migraine headaches uh, or when you have an ulcer in the mouth it, it kind of helps to um, to soothe the ulcer it can be used for skin related disorders for uh, pimples for acne and so on so um actually the juice or some or a kind of infusion that is taken from the flowers is what is used to treat vertigo to treat headaches to treat fever and so on that is the that is the form that it is used apart from that a powder form of uh, chrysanthemum is also um, is also used so the powder you can use about 3 to 6 grams of the powder you can make a tea out of it and you know you can use it that way the next thing is fennel seeds so fennel seeds um are what you called somf and uh, this has a sweet pungent and bitter rasa it is uh, light and it has a little bit of unctuousness or oiliness the vipaka is um, sweet vipaka it is ushnavirya slightly ushnavirya not very but slightly ushnavirya it helps to pacify vata and kapha it can be given to people who have chronic respiratory conditions to people who have uh, you know or to if someone's undergone some kind of an injury it can be given to them it can be given for vata related problems it helps to improve uh, digestion it can be given uh, in case of burning sensation uh, for people who have vomiting sensation who have cough who have cold who have a lot of phlegm and so on so uh, the it it the most classical preparations that use this fennel seeds would be abhayarishtam which is something that is given to relieve constipation and also a brahmi vati which is given for uh, memory and for um, yeah, so for uh, you know for intelligence is to promote intelligence for memory power and so on brahmi vati now uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind for fennel is fennel it doesn't really act as an aphrodisiac so if you if you if your client is actually undergoing um, you know some kind of therapy to conceive or if you know they they undergoing some kind of an aphrodisiac therapy then you kind of avoid giving them too much of fennel because fennel will interfere with that because it it, it has a property that um, interferes with um, you know with with that it doesn't act as an aphrodisiac so that's something that you have to be a little careful about the next thing is frankincense so this is something that we call um shallaki i don't know if you've heard of um of this it's a it, it's like a medicine that's available um, you know shall shallaki tablets capsules and so on uh this is great for osteoarthritis and joint pain uh it has a kashaya tikta and madhura rasa it is bitter astringent and sweet in rasa it is light it is uh dry and uh, it has cooling virya and it has a pungent vipaka it helps to pacify kapha and pitta doshas the bark of this uh frankincense it helps uh, improve you it improves your nourishment it uh, acts as a uh, as something that absorbs water and all that in case of uh, diarrhea or loose stools it, it, it the bark can be used for diarrhea for rakta pitta when there's some kind of an ulcer or a wound that hasn't healed um it can be used for hemorrhoids um and you know for blood uh, related problems now the resin of this frankincense is uh, sweet it is bitter it is uh, pungent and it is it has a very penetrating property so it's really good for the skin it can be used for fever for um, 
um, psychological disorders for um, you know uh, disorders of the mouth and there's a frankincense oil that is available an essential oil that is available now this essential oil can be used for aromatherapy uh, so if you just you know take maybe two three drops of this essential oil in your palm and you rub it in your uh, in, in your palms and you inhale it you know it helps to improve concentration it helps uh, it kind of helps to uh, clear your mind out so it helps in mind clarity also you this oil is also used for massages and so on but this is the most effective form of the oil right and um, and there are various tablets that are available, um, shalaki tablets that are available that you can use for joint pain, for arthritis, for osteoarthritis, for um, for women who have uh, knee pain, right? Uh, it, it especially after they've uh, you know they've undergone the menopause, and then when they most of the women after they've menopause they start having problems with their knee. So this uh, shalaki tablets work great for um, osteoarthritis and osteoporosis and uh, related problems. The next thing is ginger or shunti. So ginger is good for vata and for kapha. It can be given for uh, menstrual bloating, for dysmenorrhea. Um, it's you know used um, in your postpartum um, it, it, so just basically uh, ginger you can use the you can uh, for fever one of the most effective uh, ingredients is using ginger juice with a little bit of honey you know just the just the swarasa of ginger and ginger is something that you add to your food it kind of helps you know it helps um, improve your digestion and so on so ginger is something that can be um, include it added to your food and uh, you can use it as a as a tea. You can make a tea with ginger and use it. You can use a uh, ginger candy that you can you know for people who have cough and chest congestion and throat proper pain and so on. Um, it can be added to food like your soups, your chutneys, your vegetables, your curries and so on. Also, there's a a, 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 a medicine that's made with uh, ginger. So it's like a, a, a it's like a drink that's made with ginger, right? And that is used. Uh, you add ginger and jaggery and other ingredients to it, and then there's a there's a there, it's like a tonic. It's like a syrup form that's made, but a little more thicker. And um, with that, you add uh, there are a lot of things that are added to it. There's licorice that's added to it. And you know various other ingredients that are added to it, like pepper and so on, and that is very effective for uh, congestion and for um, for for cough and cold and chest congestion and so on. Also, for people who sing uh, and who want you know a little bit of um, who want some little bit of if they have some irritation in their throat or whatever, then this ginger works great for them too. So the next thing is turmeric or haridra, which is uh, something that's very commonly used in, uh, in, can be very easily used in cooking. Now there's a lot of uh, importance that's given to turmeric because of its anti-cancerous properties. And uh, there are people who are actually now trying to spread awareness about why turmeric is a very important ingredient in your day-to-day -day lives and why you must have turmeric um, in the form of capsules. Now, uh, there are turmeric, there are organic turmeric capsules that are um, that are made in, in in various places. And I, in fact, had a relative who came down from London recently, and she wanted turmeric capsules. The thing is, you we add turmeric in India. We add turmeric to everything that we make um my mother being an ayurvedic doctor she you know she she likes adding turmeric to things and she keeps cleaning vegetables with turmeric and she adds turmeric to everything so i've grown up seeing that and eating that so i kind of do the same thing i add turmeric to almost everything like everything i do i need to add that pinch of turmeric not too much of turmeric but that pinch of turmeric it makes me feel the food is like healthier and there's less damage to whatever has gone into your food so 
um if you start having turmeric regularly in your diet um you don't need these tablets or capsules to help you but just you know regular usage of turmeric in your diet and all you need is you know less than half a teaspoon of turmeric every day that's all you need so if you add say like you know maybe um you don't even need half a teaspoon less than that so if you add like a pinch of turmeric when you're making some vegetable a pinch of turmeric when you're making uh, your curry or if you add you know say quarter teaspoon of turmeric um when you clean your vegetables and you know kind of wash it nicely in that that turmeric that you get is more than enough uh, to help you it 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 kind of act, it has an antiseptic use it, it is antibacterial uh, it is anti cancerous and um it basically helps prevent infections and it will help increase your immunity right so for people who have uh, skin disorders or you know um, if you want nice complexion you can just use this turmeric on your face on your skin uh people in uh, in uh, a part of india called tamil nadu people actually use turmeric in um, every week uh, they kind of use there's this turmeric there's a wild variety of turmeric that is available which is not as yellow as the other you know the um the turmeric that we use in cooking and all that so this wild variety of turmeric is powdered and these um, women actually apply it every week weekly ones on their skin on their hands legs and everywhere because that acts as a natural agent that removes excess hair growth so if you keep applying turmeric to your skin it kind of helps to you know remove unwanted hair from your from your skin so uh, there are women who in 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 tamil nadu who actually practice that who who do that um, apart from adding it to your food you can even add a pinch of turmeric to your milk and you can have that that's a great um a medicine that's a great drink for people who suffer from coughs cold throat pain and so on right so um there are different forms of turmeric you can make a you can even make a you know you can make a, a paste of turmeric and apply it to your face if you have pimples and you you have recurrent pimples and if your face is you know your skin is very sensitive or if you have an infection and you want to do something to help remove the uh, bacteria and kind of kill the infection turmeric is what you must go to and yeah i think this is the last one fennel shatapushpa so um we kind of went through this we we saw fennel we looked through fennel do you guys have any doubts in what we've done today any doubts in the presentation that i've done today yeah all right you guys can go through the presentation again and if there is you know something that your um, and other thing is if you have indian stores near uh, wherever you live do go to those indian stores and actually try and uh, look for these um, spices that we've been learning about it would be great if you guys could actually see those spices and uh, if you if if you already started practicing ayurveda or if you have clients and you want to give them recommendations it would be great if you could actually have these herbs these spices with you right you can start using them too uh, that's the best way to learn you know um, i think every ayurvedic physician uses a lot of these spices on themselves that's a great way to learn but it would be great if you could you know buy uh, these organic spices that we're learning about and store it you can store it in airtight uh, glass jars and nothing will happen to the spices and according to your needs you can powder them you can make different combinations with them you know you can make something for cough something for cold something for you know throat pain and so on so um, if you guys are interested you can do that and if you have any doubts about how to mix them up or how to make your own uh, powders you can uh, post it on the forum and i'll be more than happy to help you out with that but you know just take a look at these spices so do go to a store and look at these spices i think that's very important for you to know what you're learning about right thank you so much guys if you have doubts you can post it on the forum thank you